Hi everyone, this is Teo from Parkerblocks.com. Today I'm going to create a pen and ink watercolor sketch of this construction crane. Before I start, let me show you the tools that I will use today. This is a Pelican M200 fountain pen, one of my favorite pens for drawing. Then I will use Daniel Smith watercolor sticks to color my sketch. I'll talk more about them later on. I will tell you why I cut them up into smaller pieces and fit them into pens like this. All right, before I begin the sketch, let me uh, show you what I usually do. So I will usually measure, uh, get the proportions first. So in this case, I want to perhaps measure the bottom of this digger using my pencil. So from the edge of this pencil to my index finger, it's around this length. And let me compare it to this portion here. So it's about maybe two thirds. So we have two thirds here and we have three here. So this is like two parts and this is three parts. So later on when I put this on page, I need to make sure that I have space enough to fit five parts. That's two plus three. And using this again, let me measure it. All right, this is about so the height of this digger is much uh, shorter. So this is again three parts, then this will be around two parts. And from here, I think to here it's about the same height. I will leave the ground as it is, but for this part here, I mean this is snow. I'm not sure whether I should draw it in or change it to something else like grass perhaps I should just leave it as a snow just leave it white so that it can provide a nice contrast to this uh, digger here but for the building at the back I'm not going to leave it in because right now um, it's not making this digger very obvious because of this building behind you can see that this shape here now it sort of merges into this uh, digger here so if i were to leave this out i can get the digger to be the subject of the scene so i'm going to use my pencil to plot down the general proportion of the digger so just now there was um, two parts here one part here two part here and this is around three part so it's something like this so this is where the wheel, the tracks are going to be. And now that I have the two parts, maybe I'll plot the height of this crane as well. So the crane is around this height. And this is the height of the digger, sorry. And this is the height of the whole arm. And it's going to be somewhere like this. So by just placing some of the uh, pencil markings, I can now ensure that my drawing will fit onto this page. I'm going to start by drawing the compartment that the driver is sitting at. There is no driver in the compartment. So I'll just go a bit slow just to make sure that the lines are sort of uh, going in the direction that I want. As I draw, I'm constantly measuring the proportion of this um, digger. So this part here is half the height of this whole part here. So I just want to get the shape correct and move it down like this. Mechanical objects, they are a bit difficult to draw because there are a lot of things going on. So if you want the details, if you want to challenge yourself, you can draw something like this. After drawing the big shapes, it's easier, it's so much easier to fill in the smaller shapes that are within the big shapes.
These are the Daniel Smith watercolor sticks. The reason why I cut them up to put into these pans is because some colors, for example, this Hansa yellow medium, it has become so soft that I can no longer use it as a stick. So I was able to actually squeeze it into this pan very, very easily and it was able to fill up the whole pan, unlike uh, these sticks here, which are actually still quite hard. So this is really very soft and very sticky. You can see the reflected light on this permanent Alizari Crimson. That is caused by the binder that has escaped from the paint. So the binder actually escaped from the paint and it made the whole stick very wet. And the binder actually went through the label that was going around the stick. So um, because of that, the whole stick is very wet, very sticky, and it's very messy to use. So that's why I have decided to just basically just cut up the sticks and put them like this. It's easier for me to use it like a normal watercolor pen. The light source is coming from the front and the right side of this digger. So this side that I'm looking at right now is actually in shade. So now I'm going to use Hansa Yellow Medium and it's very, very highly pigmented. So I'm just going to color it like this. Maybe I'll add a bit of permanent Alizar Crimson so that the yellow is not so uh, striking. The ink that I'm using inside the fountain pen is Noodleless ink, waterproof and dry. So let me try and add ultramarine and see what color I can get. If I want it darker, I'll just add a bit more ultramarine. I'm going to leave some light here because the snow will show through between these gaps here. As I reach this area, I want to wash my brush so that I can blend the colors together because the blue actually uh, starts to fade into the white of the paper. This part should be white. Okay. So now I can use this blue to make the shadow area for the snow. So perhaps I'm going to use the cobalt again with permanent Arizona Crimson. And perhaps some yellow. I'm going to glaze over like this. More Hansa Yellow, Permanent Alizar Crimson and Ultramarine just to get this part really dark. Alright, now I'm going to clean my brush and add in the shadow area for the yellow. So I'm just going to mix yellow again and with some Permanent Alizar Crimson. This is almost done. I'm going to add some of these um, trees here behind and they are of the same color as the ground here. All right, this is the completed sketch. I only use four colors, Hansa Yellow Medium, Permanent Alizari Crimson, Cobalt Blue, and French Ultramarine. I've added some highlights using the white gel pen on the glass window here and also here 
for the snow and some sparkle here on the snow behind this by the way is the uniball signal um-153 white gel pen thanks for watching see you in the next video bye